Hey, welcome back to Two Star Garage. Today we've got the 2005 Jeep Liberty CRD in the shop today. This is the 2.8 liter turbo diesel. And if you're here, you either are looking at one of these and you wonder what to expect. You've heard that they're temperamental, which they are, or you've got one and you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say the engine doesn't come up to temp when you're just driving down the road and it's 60 degrees or below, or when you're towing something, it runs warm. So we got a bunch of things going on today. In this video alone, we're gonna go ahead and install this upgraded thermostat assembly with the 203 degree Dodge Hemi thermostat in it. I think it's for the 5.7, could be multiple models. We're gonna see if we can fix the not getting up to engine temp when it's about 60 or below. Yeah, 60 or below, it doesn't come up to temp. And we're gonna try to fix the overheating or running warm while we're towing stuff down the highway. I hope this video provides you guys and gals with a little bit of hope for your Jeep CRD. You can keep these things on the road. This thing was destined for the junk pile. Uh, we've done a lot of work to it. These are, these are some Jeeps that might not be the coolest Jeeps right now. They've got a following, you know, a certain following. There's about 3,000 people in the Jeep CRD group. These are going to be sought after, in my opinion, once you know 10 15 years go by and diesel engines are aren't able to be deleted at all this is deleted i got one sitting right over here that's deleted and they're just cool they're almost like a dodge raider but with a diesel engine in them and more modern so if you look at a dodge raider i think that'd be like the 80s right kind of a little sleek vehicle like this wasn't cool at all back then but i think these are going to catch on so if you got one don't be afraid to hang on to it Here's gonna be your thermostat. This is gonna be the original OEM thermostat housing. As you can see right here, it's been brazed. If I were to take these two bolts loose, these are 50 Newton meters is what they're torqued to, by the way. These come from Robert Diss. You can find them on Facebook in the Jeep Liberty CRD group. This is gonna be the temp sensor. I could be wrong. We'll find out when we take the other OEM one out of the vehicle. I've never had it out before. When you get that upgraded thermostat, it does come with a gasket. Put this Permatex copper spray gasket on there. I go ahead and I put it on the surface of the actual thermostat itself. And then I even spray down the gasket and I put it on there and just snug it right up. Don't over snug it, of course, but this stuff you can find at O'Reilly. Should be able to find it at Advanced Auto Parts, 86226-80697. Good stuff. When I did the top end on this, did the head gasket. I put this on the block and I put this on the gasket and then I put the head on. We've been going about 15,000 miles and we have just been running nice and smooth. We're about to 300,000 miles on the odometer on this. I think we're gonna go ahead and replace the injectors soon. Bad or anything like that, but kind of just a gift, you know, thank you for 300,000. Let's get you some new injectors type of thing. I don't know the exact process to replace or upgrade the thermostat housing. Uh, if there's one called out by Robert or anybody else, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the oil cap off and I'm gonna take the engine cover off. Oil cap back on. Might see a little green painter's tape in here. I've got things labeled from when I had this tore down. I used to leak coolant and it would shoot it out the tailpipe. Uh, now we don't lose a drop of coolant. It doesn't leak any oil anymore because we replaced the aluminum intake gasket as well. I gotta work on getting a shop light that just fits right over the hood here on this. This will have to make do for now. It's a dreary day, we're inside here. It's not the greatest of lighting in here, guys, but as you can see right here, this is where your viscous heater would normally go, but I did the upgrade from William Hatcher. It's, the, it's an idler pole you can get from idparts.com and it's got a specific machined plate from William Hatcher at WW Diesel Custom Fabrications. So you guys can check him out on the group if you want to, he'll hook you up with that. It's nice to have that viscous heater out of there, it was making a lot of noise. This is actually what it looks like right here. I'm trying to think, I think I got two of them. Where's the other one? The other one might still actually be in this CRD. This CRD is just literally sitting on the edge of the scrap yard. It's really bad shape. Doesn't run, head gasket or cracked head or something internal in the engine is wrong, but we're gonna fix it. We're gonna fix it because I'd rather build one than buy one. So here's our thermostat right here. The engine's still a little warm. I just got done driving it. I'm gonna drain out some coolant. 
so that way we don't have any in this hose anymore. When you're gonna drain coolant from your Jeep CRD, all right, this is the passenger side, it's just right up under here. You can grab it and turn it, usually a plier. I think it's actually, a, it's kind of in the shape of a bolt, a 14 or a 15, something like that. All right, so I've got it draining just ever so slowly from that little tube right there. I use this, a little bendy. Works to turn that. When I squeeze that, you can tell it's coming out a little harder. We're looking to get rid of all the fluid in this tube. And essentially, we would get rid of all the fluid in the other two tubes right here that would come down to the thermostats. Let's open up our cap here. I'm gonna let this drain out and be right back. I'm draining this all the way down. There's nothing really left in here. But if I squeeze this, it still bubbles up a little bit. So we want all the fluid to be out of this tube all the fluid to be out of the reservoir. And while that's happening, I've undid the two straps that hold the air box on, disconnected the mass airflow sensor, and now I'm gonna go ahead and take this out, set that right up there on the engine like that. Got our micro air filter, catches a lot of stuff. Always have an air filter on no matter what. Put the air filter right there. I'm gonna take our air box off. This just comes out with gentle pressure just pulling up slightly. You don't have to pull too hard. It will come. Well, you gotta put a decent amount of pressure on it, but yeah, there we go. Turn it sideways, take it out. That's what it looks like. They do make an upgrade. Not that they make it specifically for the Liberty CRD, but there's an upgrade for this where you pull the gas or air intake off and you put it on your CRD. I'm gonna go ahead and plug the turbo hose right here so we don't get anything down in there. And now that the air box is out of the way, right down here, is one of our three small bolts that are holding on the thermostat housing. You've got one right here, one down here, and one just underneath. I may or may not have to take off that hose right there. We'll see. There's just air in that hose. We're gonna take off this hose now. This is a constant pressure clamp, which is the kind of clamp that you want. Stand by for me. There we go, we're off. I always take my tools that I'm using for the specific job and I'll just put them off to the side right where I can get access to them. So when I go to put this hose back on, when I go to tighten up the radiator drain the rest of the way, put this hose clamp on for the turbo, etc. All right, let's take this thermostat hose off, the upper, there we go. So nothing coming out of there. You can see it right here. All right, you're not discouraged yet, right? I just read a, an advertisement today. They were trying to sell a Jeep CRD because we're looking for one potentially to replace that broken one over there. I can fix this one though. I just don't know if I have the time to. Ah, I want to. At the same time, I'm not sure. Uh, it needs everything. There's your up close shot. Let's go ahead and get this first bolt off we're gonna see how far in there we can get i think i can get in there and take that thermostat off without having to take this hose off there's gonna be our new thermostat i'm excited for this i am so excited for it to run at operating temperature okay right here this is gonna be a 10. it's gonna seem like it's tight with your little quarter inch but it's not too tight and there it is now let's look down here for the Lower, if you compare this, we just took this one out and now we've got one right here and one right here and potentially one right there. We might have four of these bad dogs. We got one, two, three, four. Going in with a pretty decent extension here. That was not very tight at all. Just so you know. I can't remember what the torque specs are on this, but all I need to do is know that it needs to be snug and that's enough. Don't get these bolts mixed up. That one's a little longer. Face is just like this. We just took it out of there. Had some anti-seize on this one I see. We'll leave that on there. Right down here, this hose right here connects up to your thermostat as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out and that's gonna be a quarter inch socket. I just am gonna take this off because for one, it's gotta come off. But the reason I decided to right now is because I can't see with it on. You gotta be very careful not to drop something. Make sure you have some magnetic picker uppers. I'm just gonna pull this off here. All right, so that comes off because we drained the coolant. It means we didn't get any spillage. That would be this connection 
right here on the new one. Both bolts in there, we got two more to go. Now just underneath that is another constant pressure clamp. For this I'm gonna use the hose clamp pliers right down in here. There's one more big one down here. This is just a hose clamp. This is the constant pressure one. We'll get this one off first. Both of those hoses used to hook up to the viscous heater, by the way. I shouldn't say both of them. One went to the viscous heater. The other one was a little hose that came out of the viscous heater and into that thermostat, I do believe. So if you don't know the viscous, just know it's going to look like this. If you do have the viscous heater, um, your orientation of tubing connections might look a little bit different because it does run through that viscous heater. Not a big deal at all. What am I looking for? Hose clamp players. These will allow me to have a constant pressure on that until I press the release right here. Can a guy get to it? Oh yeah. Oh. Flashlight droppage. Well, I can actually turn that out a little bit, so I think we're going to be okay. Just kind of moved it on the... That's a tough one. I think we got to get the bottom one off first. Can your bottom right down here. It's going to be a 7 millimeter. At least that's what the hose clamp is that I've got on here. I don't know what you've got. You might have the original clamp. Here it comes. I'm having to give a pretty good tug on this one. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Urgh! Not yet. Three, two, one. Urgh! There it comes out. Spill a little bit of coolant. A little bit of brake clean. Brake clean, check. I don't like when I'm driving down the road and I'm smelling coolant. I took the bottom hose off. We're gonna take the top one now. Don't get these mixed up, by the way. It happens to be in that orientation for a reason. Right there, you see it? Right here. Any hoser. This one's gonna come off pretty easy. See? Told ya. There it is. Now I'm just checking, we've got everything off of the thermostat except for the temp probe. And that's just held on by a little clip right back here as far as the wiring is concerned. So right behind, you can't see it. And it's off, looks just like that right there. Thermostat's all disconnected now. Definitely gonna have to put that temp probe in the back of this from the OEM. Lord, we pray that this would come off okay. I'm just putting my magnet down there. Didn't come off yet. Oh boy, it's ready to. It's ready to, and I will lose this. Right down the heat shield if I'm not careful. Look at that, there it is. This one is the biggest doozy of them all. I can't see it for anything. The exhaust manifold sits right there. If I lose this, I'm gonna have to take a bunch of stuff off to try to get to it. It's gonna be silly. Maybe I could fish it out. Good luck, thank you very much. Let's do it. Grab your little knuckle joint. Let's see if we can get on that thing. So let's take a look and see how this one goes in. This one is just right down there, so once it's out, it's out. It doesn't have an extra holder like you see there. So you gotta be very careful. It's all fine, it's all part of it. No, I can't reach it back there, but that's okay. Do I know how many threads are in it? No, Lord help me. The fourth and final bolt. Have your magnetic extension close. Extend it out. Um, I came out without it. Where's it at? Look at that. There's our fourth one. And that goes right there. One, two, three, four. Okay, you can see a little bit of that make your own gasket copper coating. If you look at these, you can see the differences, right? One's thicker, one's thinner. And here's where we're gonna put our heat probe. Let's change that out. Does this work? There it is. There's the old gasket. Any hoser. Let's keep moving forward. It's gonna be a 19. You can see it's kind of corroded. I'm gonna break it off with the impact. There it is. We'll clean that off. This one is officially 
not needed, I can send this back to Robert and I think he gives me $50 back. So we'll do that. Helps him out, helps us out. So now it's time to put the temperature sensor in. It's going to go right back here. Yes, I did put some thread sealant on there. Don't want this to leak. It's a good time to replace your temperature sender, your temp probe. I am not doing that today. Snug as a bug in a rug. And now I'm just going to get that old gasket off of there. It should come off fairly easily. That's the hope. You know what I mean. If it doesn't, I'll be sad. Right here is where the audio broke, guys. So you're looking at the thermostat gasket. It's got some of that copper coat on it. It started off green. That's why it looks like it does. We're getting rid of that. We're putting a new one on. Here is the surface head where the thermostat mates up with the head. So that's all cleaned up and ready to go. There's the copper coat, you can get that at O'Reilly, you can get it online, you can probably get it in advance. And I'm going to take it, and I've already sprayed down the gasket here on that cardboard box. And then I'm going to spray down the thermostat face right there where it mates up to the gasket and where the gasket mates up to the head. So that's what I'm doing right there. You can, you can tape it off if you want to, I didn't worry about it. Right now I'm going to put the thermostat back on, so i got the two top bolts going through. I put the thermostat gasket on and I'm going to snake it right in there between the tubes and the hoses and get it in. And here I'm just working through the process since I don't have a microphone, just showing you the quick work that we're going, putting stuff back together, the air box, etc. And always put your OEM coolant in this, your OEM spec coolant in this. Don't put any of the green stuff or any of the universal stuff that'll cause corrosion in the block. And if you ever have a bad head gasket, you're going to find out possibly the hard way because you're going to have pitting on top of your engine block. Right here, I don't know if it's running, I can't quite tell, I bet it's running. This is where you fill, this is where you drain right there. And I'm just squeezing, gauging the air in the hose and it kind of makes it come out that little valve port on the top left of your radiator as you're looking at it. Now it's the next day, there's the old thermostat. I'm a happy camper, thank you Robert so much for this. And I'm about to show you where the temp sits Hey, I'm back. Can you believe my microphone broke? I mean, those things don't last for six months. We're gonna get another one, don't worry about it. I'll just use this for now. But check this out. This has not happened since I've owned the vehicle. Would you just look at it? We're up to normal temp. It's just idling. Oh yes, that is very nice. It's gonna be running. So nice, I'm excited to see what type of fuel mileage we get with this thing going down the highway. We've been over 30, about 34, 35. Let's see what we get now. Everybody have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you next time, bye-bye.